Okay, doing a quick update, I guess, or I wanted to talk about the uh, my distributor. So the distributor I have out there, I've got two distributors. Uh, one's from Nolan Motor, and that one I had kind of rebuilt. Um, it's a quick fix kind of thing, and I really wasn't happy with it. So I thought, oh, I'll set it to the side, and I'll deal with it later. Well, I've got this motor I'm working on, and uh, of course, uh, the you know the wires. There's two magnets or little transformers that are they call them coils uh, that are inside of the distributor. And there's three wires that go in. They're red, white, and blue or black. Uh, like on the switch box, it's blue, but basically that's ground, so black is fine. Anyway. The, high, the low side is the green um, coil that you'll see me working on. And while the, and that's the low side. So, you know, at low speed uh, is what I mean, is that coil, uh, you know, it sends a voltage to the switch box. So it's got continuity. And... I can put an ohm meter on it and I can see what the ohms are. If you put a continuity on the red, then it shows no continuity. Um, however, it shows about 400 ohms. So I have three different ones of those red coils and uh, they all are the same thing. So, you know, I went on some forums to try to figure out, well, what is this doing? Exactly, because, I mean, I should have continuity going through a transformer, a coil of, of some kind. And uh, so, you know, it's not shorted because it's got resistance. Although then, you know, maybe it is shorted and maybe there's still some resistance. But that doesn't make any sense. So if there was a short, then you wouldn't. In my mind, you wouldn't have any resistance whatsoever. So then I thought, well, maybe, okay, so maybe it might be a partial choke. And in that case, then sending voltage with the meter to that coil uh, may not be enough voltage for me to get continuity. And I could probably test that theory by putting up my oscilloscope, going through the whole scientific part of it to try to figure out exactly what's going on. So, I'm a little like, I don't really want to do that. That just seems like a lot of work. Whereas, you know, I could go ahead and put it together, start it up, and see if at high side, you know, what's the difference. So, you know, um, but what I believe happens is that in the switch box, at low speed, it's got a voltage and it goes, and a certain RPMs build up, then the voltage isn't going to change, but the amperage will. And so what I'm thinking is then it, it, it causes a switch or maybe there's some kind of like operational amplifier so at a certain amperage, once, it, once it's uh, reached that amperage, then it allows the signal or the amperage to flow to the other coil. Now the other coil is obviously picking up voltage from the engine and the RPM. So I'm thinking the same voltage, but maybe the amperage that increases with RPMs, then that coil becomes active and it just filters off that voltage. And, um, you know, you're keeping basically the switch box then is telling the coil to fire and um, that's just sending the voltage high amperage over to the distributor and then out the plug wires. So hopefully, you know, hopefully I explain that right. And uh, if somebody knows exactly if it's a choke or if my theory is correct, then you know, let me know. But at this point, uh... I would have to, basically I don't have a power source, so I'd have to set up a power source. I don't know what what the operational 
amperage would be. So, you know, I don't want to put too much amperage to it or not enough to trigger it. So without having an engine running high side and measuring what that amperage actually is, you know, so it gets kind of scientific. Like, you know, how I got to do several things in order to, like, you know, know if this is right or not. One of the things I thought about doing was calling Mercury Marine, but then since this is an older motor, you know, they're used to deal with all their new stuff. And unless I could get some old guy that knows everything about them, I, I suppose. Um, I'm sure there's some other mechanics out there that have worked on these motors for years and they can tell me exactly what that's doing. Um, and hopefully maybe, you know, I'll find that information one day uh for now you know i i sort of bought i bought i had one on the motor and it tested around 400 ohms and then i bought one and then it tested out lower ohms and i sent it back so then i bought a third one they're pretty cheap you can get them you know i bought a third one and it still tested the same way and so I don't feel like that somebody was selling me a bill, bill of goods. I mean, it's possible I could have got two, two bad ones. But I think that um, probability is that that's not the case. That I'm looking at two good ones, three good ones. Just one is a little bit lower uh, resistance or ohms. So, you know, it's got an internal resistance, and so it's going to absorb so much energy. Uh, that's a mouthful. So, anyway, that's where I'm at. I'm going to try to put this in the video to maybe explain it a little more and to see what kind of information I can gather from it. So, um, we're moving forward slow with it, uh, but I'm trying to document everything that I can document. Anyway... Backing up just a little bit, this is an, this is the original coil that came off the motor. And I've got another coil over there, but it doesn't have this bracket, which I need. So I'm going to take this bracket and use this bracket. So I've just got to take it, take it off and put it on the other motor. So it's pretty simple because it's just a couple of screws it's three A's so you need you know like a a wrench there and then just There's a bolt that comes out, and you got this guy on this side. out and then it just will come right off
hopefully. <clears throat> and then while I'm at it, I might as well take off the solenoid because I have a new solenoid. So, this is a half inch, seven sixteenths. have it in the back in it until I put <clears throat> this is a good solenoid but they get old so cheap replace them all right that's off let's take my three ace and my take take this one off a better coil anyway. Probably should have cleaned this up. Mm. I think I'll clean this up a little bit before I put it on. I'm having to do a repair. I did another repair on these before on that distributor I just put in and I noticed that my repair was bad so with a little bit more knowledge now I went ahead and opened up the bottom of the distributor out and there's these two magnets and they've got a little grommet that this sits on top this little grommet and then this 
goes on and it screws into the housing. But unfortunately, you know, this is old wiring, so it uh, it just the wire is crumbling apart. So what I'm going to have to do is put some new wiring on this and um, basically unsolder it from here and this little PC board and I'm going to have to put all new wiring on it. So that's kind of unfortunate but I guess it's part of it. So get the soldering on that out. Get it heated up. So I'm a little bummed about that. Pretty common though. Um, and it's pretty easy to tell how it came out because there's a screw on the other side. So yeah, you got your black, your red, and your white. And uh, it's part of the, I guess what you'd call the magneto. So anyway. It's okay though. It's repairable, and I'll get it. I'll get it fixed, and then I'll take that distributor out. Maybe use this one and repair that one, so I can sell it. And uh, but you know, I kind of needed to look at the look at this anyway. This is the. The rotor and these rotors. I just looked this up for a guy the other day, and they're a hundred and sixty dollars. So they're pretty pricey. I used